So, Landon, welcome to the Creative Block Podcast. What's up? <laughs> um, just wanted to, you know, first of all, say thank you for coming on and, and being on the podcast. Like, I know we've talked about it for a minute now, and I'm, I'm very happy because I think you are, you know, we talked a little, a little bit about it before, where said that you are a content creator, mm -hmm. and, you know, you say you really didn't feel like one, but it's, uh, I, I think for... You know, you're kind of like a different style of guest that I normally have on a podcast. So it's, I think it'd be cool to have a different perspective. But also, um, I want to commend you on all, everything that you've been able to do with growing Strictly Apple and, yeah. and being a TikTok sensation. And, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit. But, you know, for our listeners who don't know who you are, can you kind of give us a brief introduction as to who you are and what you do? Yeah, for sure. So um, my name is Landon, Landon Mooney. And I started a business when I got out of high school um it wasn't necessarily supposed to be a business it was more of a let me make some money because every you know 18 year old wants to make money um but i bought a laptop and sold it flipped it made some money on it ended up doing it a couple more times um and then i started just doing apple stuff and now i have a storefront and i have a um i have a storefront and we do strict it's called strictly apple i buy sell repair all apple products um globally so that anybody any state any place we ship it out to them so anything apple we can do it's, it's pretty awesome man like was that how did how did that even come about like were you just wanting to you know finishing school wanting to like start making some money or how did that even come about so exactly how it came about as i wanted a macbook when i was in high school because if you're in high school and you got a mac you're the big dog yeah right? you're a baller right? yeah you're like that you're like you're the dude so i wanted one but my parents wouldn't buy me one and my dad would never, he wouldn't let me take my money out of the bank. Because like growing up, I grew up a little different, but my dad never let, it was like my money, but he wouldn't let me take it out of the bank because he was like, you need to save, 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 right? And he wouldn't let me buy a laptop. So when I graduated, I got 1500 bucks from my graduation from everybody that came to my graduation party. And I took 300 of it and bought an old computer. Uh, it was a MacBook. And then I took that MacBook, I sold it for 700 a month later. And it was 400 bucks and I was like, I just wanted a Mac and then I sold it and flipped it and made money. So then I was like, hey, let me buy another one, see what happens. So I did it again, I ended up buying like another one and selling it and making some money. And then I just did that two or three times. And I, I was doing HPs and like regular PCs at first, but I didn't want, I only, I, like, I love Apple from like birth. I love Apple, I like seeing iPhones, iPads, I thought it was the coolest thing. So I, um, I just started flipping the stuff and kept doing Apple, Apple, Apple. And then one name, October 16th, 2016, I started the Facebook page, Strictly Apple. And, you know, I had 100 likes on there in a month. You know, it was cool. Um, and then I just kept flipping. I thought I was just a side gig. It was just something to make money. You know what I mean? And it went from there. And it's, I mean, it's definitely changed my life now. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. You talked about that your upbringing was a little bit different. Can you talk a, talk a little bit about that? How was it different? Yeah, so I um, I graduated with five people. So I went to a very, very small school. A lot of people, you know, you graduate 400 or something like that, you know, a regular. I was a, it was a small Christian school, which, um, you know, if you go to a private school, it's a lot different than a public school for sure. Um, but it was Christian background, Christian family, which I still am. Um, but, you know, going to school with... 80 people versus 8,000 or <laughs> however many, it's a, it's a lot different. So, um, but I learned, we all, cause I have two brothers, my uh, brother Lee, he's 32 now. And then my brother Luke, he'll be 30 next month. And um, growing up, my dad always taught us like how to work, like work, work and like physical work. So it's kind of weird because I don't do like, this isn't necessarily physical work now. It's a lot of brain, but my dad, my dad's the smartest man I've ever met. Um, and he's he's just a hard worker and he taught us that and now all three my brother owns a landscaping business and my brother lee owns a motorcycle shop um and then i own this so none of us all three of us we don't work for anybody we work for ourselves which is super cool um and yeah my dad just taught us how to work he's an electrician um always works side jobs every single day he did a side job um and he would i mean yeah and my mom uh, she cleaned houses growing up so yeah that's that 
Yeah, so I mean, so you feel like it's you. It was kind of like instilled in you to kind of eventually, you know, build a side gig and kind of do your yeah. own thing. No, yeah. yeah, it was definitely instilled in us to not work for somebody. I don't know. It was weird growing up. You know, we were always cutting people's neighbors' grass, trying to make twenty bucks, um, working for people that we had at the church. I remember being thirteen years old, and we had a garden in our house, and after church um, on Sunday, I would take tomatoes. <laughs> I would take tomatoes and set up a little table behind the church and sell tomatoes three for a dollar. Um, and everybody would buy them because three for a dollar tomatoes, you can't buy that at the store. These are fresh picked tomatoes and you're helping out a kid at the church. Yeah. And I used to go down to Grove City, um, where right there by the, um, that, um, a place they play the bands and stuff in the summer. Okay. Yeah. And I used to go there and I remember taking like a hundred tomatoes there one night. I'd go out, pick the tomatoes on a Friday afternoon to wash them, take them, take the green heads off and then go to um, down there and sell them for three for a dollar. I remember making like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks when I was 13, 14. My dad would drop me off and I would just stay there and people would buy them. And I always liked, I, but my dad never made, my dad paid for the, um, he paid for everything. I just had to take care of the garden. So, and our garden wasn't huge, but do you have a tomato plant? And it's got, you get 10 tomatoes a day off it sometimes. It feels really? Like, I mean, n not really that many, but it was like, it feels like there's so many. And we had like 60 tomato plants and it's like you go out there and you just pick them on you pick them pick them pick them pick them and then i'd have at the end of the driveway we had i'd take a little like a card table which says you know there's one little tiny four-legged card tables stick it out at the end of the driveway I had a sign in the yard tomatoes three for a dollar every day i'd come home from school and people would um i had a little tiny tin that i put like money and stuck it to the screw to the table and people would put the dollars in there, take the tomatoes. I didn't have to be there, so it was like. Oh wow! I mean, I'd come home to three or four dollars a day, but man, when you're 13, 14 years old, three or four dollars a day is like. Oh yeah, it's it's a lot of money. Yeah, and you can go to the you can go to the candy store at school and buy some Slim Jims or something, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's pretty cool, and you know, so you start, you know, you start flipping these these computers. What, you know, what really drove you to, to to keep doing it? Money. Yeah. I'm, I'm really much, like there's no reason to do something you know as far as like I like making money doing stuff so if, I, if I'm not like making money doing it um, and it's costing me money there's no reason to do it so I just really like making money and I like um, flipping laptops and giving good deals to people because most of the time you know they're going to pay overpriced prices and stuff um, and at first you know I was on the back I started in my bedroom and then I went to the loot my dining room and then my mom got mad because I was in the dining room like Thanksgiving like there's laptops like <laughs> like like get out of here Landon like so then I moved it we had like a Florida room I guess some people call it um, on the back of our house and that's where I had I said they let me like set up a shop back there like that's my like that's strictly Apple so people would come back there and anybody that knows strictly Apple from the beginning they came to the round behind the house like uh, wow yeah, so like, hey, go to the back, his little room behind the, Bobby, do you know who Bobby Carpenter is? Yeah. He, um, he bought a couple, um, he's bought a couple things from me, he was just here last week, but he said it, he was on 97.1, and he was saying, he was trying to tell his buddy, like, go around the, the <laughs> right around <laughs> behind the house, and buy a laptop or whatever, I thought it was funny. But yeah, like, I mean, it would, like, you hear that, right? It sounds super sketch. Yeah, like. it's super, <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds super sketch, and that's what I, um, everybody, that's how I started, though. That's right around behind the house. You go back there, pull up. There was a slide. There was an outside door that you could go in. That's why I like that. Because before, I had people walk through the whole house. Because, mm -hmm. you know, people were coming just to look at stuff. Most people wouldn't come to just buy, like, one thing. They saw that I had, you know, 10 laptops or whatever. And they'd come see what I have. But that back Florida room, the back porch, had a door and a little sidewalk going to it. So you pulled up, walked around the sidewalk, right in the back porch. And it's, it was legit. I mean, I was... 18, 19 years old, it was it was legit. So people would come back there and people started leaving reviews, started liking the page more and just grew. Yeah, and you know, as as you started, you know, getting these laptops, was there uh, you know, how how did you even learn how to like start tearing them apart and, and yeah. fixing them up? So I have a cousin um, who lives in Cleveland. He has like a PC shop and um, he does this, he does the same stuff. So he taught me a lot. And if, if I ever have like a question on something, I always sort of go to him. But Man, just, I learned a lot by my mistakes, you know, <laughs> like breaking stuff or messing stuff up. Um, I remember one time I was changing a battery for some, the first time I ever changed a battery for a customer. And I, I messed something up on, on the battery. And I, the new battery I was putting in, 
I like broke the battery. <laughs> and um, I was like, dang it. So the customer was like upset. So I ended up giving him the battery place for free because I told him it would be like a day and it was like a week because I had to order a new battery because I never kept stuff in stock. Um, but yeah, I learned from my, mis- by my mistakes and you know, just grew from there. And now, I mean, we do literally everything Apple. So yeah, my cousin and then just learning. Yeah, so you know you're 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 moving these laptops out of you know your your family Florida room. When you you know was that like more recently where you got your first like you know storefront? Um, no, so I actually I went from my bedroom to dining room to Florida room. We moved because I live in Grove City here, but I, we moved to Gehanna, and during that process, I started working with a financial company. And I thought I was going to be there long term. So I strictly Apple kind of like died down. Um, and when we moved to the other house, uh, before I moved out, moved out of my parents, I, um, I, they let me have a room there too, but it sort of died. Like I remember two years ago at this time, I had three or four laptops, like just, and I didn't have anything because I just didn't do it. I was like making money at the financial company. I stopped doing it. Um, and I was like, it's whatever. But I had three or four laptops. And I remember looking at them and be like, man, I've been doing for this for two years. Why do I have three or four laptops? Um, and then I stopped working with the financial company, worked with my brother. He, like I said, he owns a landscaping company. I worked with him for a year after I, um, and I was supposed to, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I've always worked landscaping, you know, in the summers and stuff. Um, but after working for him for that summer, I, what was it? It was like January, it was a year ago this time a year ago, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, I thought I was going to work with a financing company for a long time, but I knew I didn't want to do landscaping for the rest of my life. As far as I never, you know, you, my brother makes good money being the owner, but you know, if you work in landscaping, sometimes you don't make the best money if you're the worker, you know what I yeah. mean? Or it's like, you know, seeing somebody else make a lot more money and you're doing the work. But, um, so I didn't, I didn't want to do that. And then I had a guy in Grandview, I bought my laptops off of him. And I would go to his shop, and he had crazy prices, like the cheapest of price. I don't know if he got the stuff for free or what, but he would sell me the stuff in bulk. I remember going in the first time, and I bought a few laptops off of him. And then I called him back a week later and was like, what do you, else do you have? And he told me everything he had, and I went there and bought everything for like five grand. And then a week later... Um, he said, I got more stuff and I went back and bought like another five grand worth of stuff. And he eventually that we did that for six months. And he, um, eventually told me, um, he was like, man, you're buying all my stuff. Do you just want to move in? <laughs> and I was like, for real? And he was like, he was like, I mean, there's, I, I, I open up one day a week for you now and then I'm not gone. And I'm like, I mean, let me see. And I'm someone to make very, very quick decisions, which has, messed me up a few times, but like, I was, I told him, I said, I said, I'll let you know, give me a week. And I called him the next day and said, I'll take it. I'll take the building. So, um, I went over there and I talked about it and he was, his name's Orlando. He was the coolest dude in the world. Um, because most of the time when you rent a place, you know, the background check, stuff like that. Yeah. He was like, no, man, I trust you. Um, just move in. Here's the key. Gave me the first month free. Started paying, that was last May. Um, started, in June, that was my first month of rent. I remember the first month of actually opening up in Grandview. I remember I had nothing to do. I sold a laptop. I used to sell a laptop every couple of days, but I had genuinely nothing to do because we didn't work on. I didn't really work on laptops then, like a year ago. And um, well, I knew how to do it. We just didn't have a like, customer base because I was mm-hmm. selling it out of my house, and people normally don't take their stuff to you at their house and give it to you for two days. So um, I remember sitting in my like an office chair. And I um, was watching Netflix and just like sitting there. I remember there were like two or three days where I was at the shop and no one came in, not one person. And I was like, well, I'm probably gonna go bankrupt here in the first month of business, <laughs> right? And no, yeah, it was, it was the craziest thing in the world. I, um, I was scared to death, but yeah, and then TikTok happened. Yeah, so I mean, now TikTok happened. How how the first of all, I guess how how did that even start? And you know, was there? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could go from there. Like, did, how did that even start? Um, I had a TikTok. Obviously, I've I've watched TikTok. I watched TikTok for a year, um, before 
like posting a video. I post like I have if you scroll down down on my TikTok, um, there's like videos of uh, like just like me at the house or you know having fun with friends on Friday night. And there's like I don't know I probably posted 20, um, but when I started on July 28th was the first time I posted a video regarding anything Apple. So I say July 28th is my one year um, with TikTok on Strictly Apple. So I started with like 18,000 followers just because I had a video of my brother's girlfriend. She was doing something fun. She, it was some question I asked her and she answered it and like, I don't know, got like a million views or something like that. It was kind of cool. Um, and 50,000 likes. And it was um, just some, it was like a joke or something. And so I started with 18,000 followers on July 28th and I posted a video. I believe the video is of me changing an IMAX screen or something like that. And, um, it got like a hundred thousand views. And I was like, what? And I, I, when I was doing TikTok, I was just doing it to, cause I enjoyed it. Cause I thought it was cool. Like people were looking at the stuff. I never thought that I was going to be able to like have people send their stuff in. Well, one, like a month later, the first month I had a hundred thousand followers. I went from 18,000 to 100,000 in 30 days. By the end of August, I think we were at 100. So right there with the 30 days. And I remember, um, I remember somebody calling me and that's when I had my actual cell phone at the time. And people started messaging me on my cell phone um, before I even had a business number. And they were calling me like, hey, can we send our stuff in? Something's wrong. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I can replace your battery. I mean, if you want to send it in, you can. And then people started doing it. I started posting videos of replacing the customer's batteries and screens and motherboards and hard drive, RAM, all that. And um, after a while, it was people just kept sending their stuff. And it, blew, it by the end of September, 200,000 followers. Um, so it was like 200,000 in one in two months. And then I was like 100,000 every month. And then I posted a video of the iPhone, when the iPhone 12 came out at the end of September, I posted a video of just unboxing. Like, it's not even like a good unboxing. It was just an unboxing. Like, mm -hmm. it was my iPhone. I'm videoing it. And um, I did an unboxing. And it got 17.8 million views within like a week. And it, be, it is the, still to this day, I believe, it's the most viewed iPhone 12 unboxing other than Apple. So reveal the iPhone 12. Wow. And I gained, it's like, in two days, I gained like 100,000 followers from that. Um, so it was like 300,000. And now we're at like 630 something thousand. Um, but yeah, it's, TikTok's crazy, man. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. it's crazy how, you know, not only how like the virality of, of the videos themselves, but how, you know, how you said, like during that time, whenever you first started posting, you know, posting videos, you weren't even really repairing you know, products or anything like that, mm. you know, for, and just off the, just off of the, the strength of, you know, people seeing, oh, hey, this guy's like fixing his stuff. Uh, you know, my shit's broken. You know, wh why not? How, how soon when that started happening, did you kind of realize like, wow, like, oh, this is, could be like another extension of, of my business? Um, I mean, pretty soon. The first month I was in, the first month I was in Grandview, the first shop, like I barely, I didn't make hardly any, I made enough money to pay myself and pay the rent, which is, I mean, it's all you need, I guess. But um, when people started sending their stuff and it was like, it tripled, the, like the money that came in tripled. And I was like, what? So I hired somebody part-time just for Saturdays. Um, Cause I was like, I don't want to work six days a week. Like over five, that's fine. But let me, I had enough money where I could pay somebody um, to, to open the shop or run the shop on Saturdays. And, um, and I was like, man, it, it kept getting larger and larger and larger. People kept sending their stuff in. And then people started buying stuff. And now, I mean, it's every single day, every day. From, you know, not, we're up like 1,200% from the, what I did last January. Wow. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, that, that's amazing. And it's, uh, you know, during that whole time when you're, you know, you're still continuing to put out videos as you're doing the repairs or, you know, fixing things, um, you know, where, where's, where you kind of really, you know, at, during that time where you really like using, 
the social media TikTok as as a as a tool for you to continue to grow the business or were you just kind of like just sharing videos i'm like okay this is you know I'm, I'm just putting these videos out or were you kind of putting a little bit more thought like okay well you know with the intention of ultimately getting more business or, or growing the brand when i first started doing the videos i was just doing it to post a video like you know like people and i, I saw like tech videos um and i was like let me post this it'll be cool but then i started getting views on it and i was like well, people like this, like I'm already doing, let me just record it. I don't know, you know, I don't know what would come of it. And then um, I just kept, just kept doing it. It's not hard to make, I mean, a 60 second video takes 60 seconds plus, you know, maybe you gotta edit a few things, so five minutes tops to mm. post a video. And I was like, okay, it's gonna take me 20 minutes to do this repair. Let me make it 25, like it's not that big of a deal. So I just kept doing it. Just. And there was no, I, I, it wasn't for money at all. I was just doing it because I like doing it. Yeah. And then, um, then it just blew up. Yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. And like for me, one of the things, because like I remember seeing those videos, you know, I don't even remember which one, you know, was the first one I seen, but, you know, I, yeah, I think my son had sent me a, a video of, uh, you know, you were repairing like a MacBook or something. And, you know, I'd say, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. And, you know, you know, the, just the way you come off and like, oh, you know, a pretty interesting guy. So, you know, just check out the other videos. And you know how it is when you get, you know, you get on top, you start watching one start video scrolling. and like, you just start scrolling and just see all the, you know, you see, go through and see all the videos. Um, one of the things that, that really stuck out to me is that it's, I don't want to say you kind of have like this, this tone of like, oh, like sticking into like the, sticking into the man or the, you know, the big people. But, you know, one of the reasons a lot of people trust you with, you know, their products is that, you know, a lot of the times these are devices that, you know, they go to Apple or to a Best Buy or, or whoever and they tell them, oh, yeah, this is this is a dud. Like, this is garbage. Like, yeah, you just need to get rid of it and buy a new one. And they end up sending it to you and it turns out like, oh, yeah, you know, I just had to, you know, replace the battery or, you know, or do this or that. And it's like it turned out it was something simple. And I, I feel like a lot of times, especially like younger kids, like, you know, you're talking about like not everybody has money to buy a brand new, you know, MacBook Pro and like, oh, I spent 150 bucks and I can keep my thing like yeah. it's 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 major and like i think you being able to show that that hey you know it's now not all hope is lost and like you're not your device is not a total you know dead weight or paperweight or whatever that you know you can actually fix it and you know it's not only not only does it save pe a lot of people money but you know they get to keep their device and you know it, i i feel like it's <sighs> How do, how do I say, like, I, I've been there before where, like, I've had, like, a device broken and like, they've told me, like, oh, yeah, it's, yeah, this is no good. Or, I mean, we, we were talking about a little bit. I, I used to have a 2013 MacBook Pro and, like, up until maybe, like, 2018, that, that, that was my main device for editing video. And it's, I mean, it, it's a pretty, it was a pretty good laptop, but, like, I had done literally everything possible that I could do to make it as efficient and fast as possible. I replaced, like, the hard drives, took the CD-ROM out, right. put that extra hard drive, put the SSDs on there, upgraded to RAM, did all of that. And, excuse me, before that, you know, 2016, 2017, like, if there was anything wrong with the laptop, they like, was just like, oh, brother, this laptop is four years old. Like, it's, it's trash. I'm like, no, I mean, I'm actually editing video. Like, I would edit, like, 4K video. People talk about, like, oh, yeah, I need to have, like, a super fast computer to edit 4K yeah. video. I'm like, no, I mean, I'd, I'd still run it. And, you know, I, I, you know, tinkered with it a little bit to, to make it a little bit more efficient. But I was able to, you know, literally do pretty much all the work that I had done up until that point with this, like, super old device that I didn't have to. And during that time, I didn't have three thousand dollars to shell out on a brand new macbook pro that you know this laptop that i had bought for like 300 bucks yeah. and <laughs> may spend like an extra 250 bucks you know buying nice. ram and, and a hard drive and stuff it was able to make me so much more money so i from that perspective I, like i understand like hey like it's uh you know there's there's definitely a lot of value there that you're giving like, your customers that otherwise they probably wouldn't have either they would probably sell it to somebody to some other repair shop or just throw the thing away because like oh man well you know geek Swat told me that this is this is no good so i'm just gonna throw it away how have you always had it kind of like that do you always kind of feel that way with when, when people approach you with like their their products were, were you kind of like always aware of like that stuff was happening or the um i mean everybody's you can always get a second opinion somewhere for anything that you do right but when people started coming to me and they start sipping, sending their laptops in, and that's why I post a lot of videos on my TikTok of the, like, because we have a fill out. We have a form that you gotta fill out. You send it in, you put a description, like what's going on? Like, what, like let me get started on work on your computer. What are you experiencing? What's the issues? 
and a lot of computers started coming in and they were like I took it to Apple I took it to and I mean obviously I'm strictly Apple so it's kind of crazy but um I took it to Apple I took it to Geek Squad I took it to a place around town a small shop in my area and they said um, they can't work on it they don't know what to do and it's like what what do you mean it needed a battery like it's 150 bucks let's put a new a brand new battery in there and it turns right on so I don't know I know that there are certain clauses and things that Geek Squad can't work on because they work for Apple technically or you know Apple there's only certain things that their employee says or can say but I don't know I feel like you know if somebody can if you can make a MacBook because they're expensive it's not I mean it's some like expensive computers so if I can make a MacBook last for a customer for another for 150 bucks for another couple years like they're gonna be much much happier oh yeah for sure yeah it's 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 insane and I don't know people now people I mean we get 10 to 15 packages a day coming in of computers iPhones and they're like it's dead it's water damaged um, the screens broken I had three come in on Wednesday that it was like a, they're 2017s they're all at least 2017s because they have a 2016 2017 which is still within five years well Apple's still supposed to replace stuff if it's with within five years um, or fix they can fix stuff that's within like a five year time span same thing with Geek Squad but um, like all three of them said they went to Best Buy or Geek Squad or Apple and that I was going to they just needed screens and they said there's going to be like a thousand dollars you might as well just buy another computer wow so the thing is, screens are expensive. So it's like five hundred dollars each for a screen, but five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, like it, it would make the customer much more happy if you split the price in half. So, um, I mean, doing that, you know, it makes me feel happy, and I'm able to make some money, and then also help a customer out. If I can save them, if I can save a customer five hundred bucks, I mean, five hundred bucks is a lot of money. <laughs> so on a computer, and they can last for a couple of years. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, I, I know I that's one of the things that like, I like the most is just reading through, you know, some of the letters and stuff that family and, and, and things that you get whenever, you know, somebody will send a device that it's like, yeah, you know, literally went through, went to every 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 repair shop every option and you know it turns out like there was one i forget that it was like something like like i think they they had like a they had somebody had replaced like a screen and just didn't put the battery back on or something like that and like yeah you just tore it apart like oh yeah just put this press this in and like oh it turns out now it's crazy it was uh, i know exactly it's the keyboard it was the battery um and the trackpad they they took it to a repair. It was in Columbus too. They took it to um, a repair, that computer shop, and they the people unplugged everything. It's like the keyboard didn't work because it wasn't plugged in. But it, the reason it wouldn't power on is because the keyboard wasn't plugged in, and then the battery was unplugged. So I don't know what the people were doing. I feel like sometimes they just t- they're just trying to sell them something, and it's like just fix this stuff, man. You're gonna have a lot more happier people if you can just fix it. Like, why are you unplugging everything on the computer? Or at least, if it does have a problem, plug the stuff back in. Like, why are you giving a customer back stuff? And it, it honestly makes it fires me up half the time. But, um, like, why are you giving a customer back their stuff and it's not even, like, plugged in? Like, what's up with that? Like, well, you unplugged it. Plug it back in. Right. Like, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, that, that, that's horrible. Because I feel like a lot of times, you know, they probably either super careless with it or they're just like, okay, well, maybe if I don't do this, then, you know, they'll... And it makes people not trust... You can't trust any computer yep. shop. That's why people... Um, like, when a computer comes here, I'll tell them, hey, is it worth fixing? Is it not worth fixing? Like, let's be honest. You know what I mean? And people can trust us, which I, I'm appreciative of. But, like, that's why other computer shops, they can't trust them. There's... What are you going to... When somebody, when I'm getting stuff from another computer shop and it's not put back together right, or screws are missing, or yeah. it's like, dude, that's not that hard. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I I can talk about like my experience here because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have have you on the podcast was because I was not only uh, the content that I've seen online of you know okay, well he does good work, like people trust him, like people are actually like mailing stuff to him. And, you know, they're being happy with it. And, like, even, like, it, that's one of the cool things about, you know, social media that you're able to kind of do that validation. Like, okay, well, you know, you tag this person's, this laptop that you fix, and then, you know, you can see their reaction or, or they'll comment on it or whatever. And, you know, they're, like, validating, like, okay, yeah, this guy's good people. He's, you know, does good work and took care of me. 
So I came in and I had an old iPhone that I was gonna give to my son. I think it had it, it had like the glass was like cracked or whatever. And I mean, the whole experience with that was was you know un, un, unparalleled compared to like going to like a Geek Squad or even like Apple themselves. They're they're they you know I guess with some things they're they're pretty good like with customer service, but that phone that same phone. I had went to Apple and they were basically telling me like, yeah, this is trash. I'm just going to, you, you know, you're better off just buying a whole refurbished phone. And they wanted to charge me like 400 bucks to like just get a refurbished phone. Yeah. And came here, you know, looked at it. I think I paid, it was like about 200 bucks right. and got everything fixed. And, you know, he's still using the phone. He's using the phone now. And it, that whole experience for me was like, okay, like this is, you know, great customer experience. And like even, and I didn't even, you know, deal with you directly. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everything, everything was done with, uh, with Raymond. Right. I had worked with him, so like even you know being able to see that, like okay, like it's not just Landon that's you know has the does the customer service and it does like all the work, like oh you know like even his employees are are, are trustworthy and you know it it just uh, it gives so much does so much more for the brand that it's like you know you're you're kind of like actually for the people you're you know you're looking out for the customer's best interest and not just you know oh I'm just gonna try to. Yeah. sell another device or or you know take advantage of people because i feel like that's how a lot of people they feel like they're they get taken advantage of and um i i feel like i, I guess to kind of transition a little bit more into like on the entrepreneurship side that us as like service providers we you know at the end of the day you know you don't you get you don't get more business if people don't trust you right you don't you know it's like uh, you know one of the things like no like trust like that's those are things that people factor in whenever they you know, get your service or buy anything from you. Mm-hmm. If they can't trust you, like, you know, why am I going to go to him? And why am I going to give trust him with my money if I'm not even, you know, I'm not going to be happy with whatever I'm yeah. going to get in return. Um, was that, is, is that, you know, that, that approach, I mean, is that, you, cause you talk about like, you've, you've always kind of had that entrepreneur, you know, type thing. You're always working, kind of work doing like different side gigs. And, you know, even, you know, when, when you were young, is, is that something that was taught? Like, you know, from your dad, the different things that he instilled in you or just things that you've kind of learned over time? Um, we learn a lot over time, obviously, um, just with your know, like, own mistakes and like, learning. But no, my dad definitely taught me and my brothers like everything we know, um, specifically not in like my dad don't know anything about computers. He can barely use his phone after this. But <laughs> um, n- no, but um, my dad taught us like the simple fact of just hard work trying to get you somewhere. Um, and now, um, like a lot of people don't, I don't know. I worked really hard, really, really hard back in the day. I mean, I was up at one in the morning working on laptops back in when I was on my parents' back porch. And I guess all that brought me to sort of where we are today. And we're, I mean, we're not obviously done growing at all, not even close. Um, but I mean, my dad taught us hard work and just keep, be honest, hard work, do it for a good price, don't run people off. There's no reason to lie. Um, and my dad never stopped. My he's the hardest worker I know. He will not stop working, ever. He won't. He'll, he won't. He doesn't stop at all. And how do you feel? How has that been like? Uh, you know, from your on your parents' side, like seeing the growth that you've had and and you know the, the successes that you've been able to attain, you know, through that hard work. You know, what what kind of what kind of feedback and, and do you hear from them? Um, no, they're really proud of us. I know they are, um, for sure. My dad actually texted my brother a couple weeks, like a month ago or something like that. And I was like, Hey, um, he was talking with me. He was like, I'm really proud of all you boys, which is a huge thing. Like the biggest thing in the world is for my dad to be proud of me. Cause like I look up to him more than anybody. Um, but I mean, they're, they're, my dad's proud of all of us. My mom's proud of us. I don't know. I keep saying my dad because like he's the one that taught me how to work and stuff like that. Um, but no, I know my parents are proud of all of his boys and it's cool because like if they need anything from us, we can be there immediately or like if they want to go out of town or they want to go on vacation and they want us there we can all be there we don't necessarily have to check our work schedules or talk let me get back to you it's like yeah i can be there. there's no problem mom it's no problem dad um and that right there has i mean it's worth every single late night early morning anything oh yeah for sure i mean i, I think that that's one of the beauties of, of being kind of you know freelancer or you know entrepreneur in the sense where you're kind of you're doing your own thing well yeah you still have to put in a lot of work and you got to put in you know hours when whenever it boils down to like actually working but you have that flexibility that you're able to um, you know take time when you need or you know it, it's ultimately at the end of the day it's just really like 
a, a flexibility that you're the the flexibility that you're able to have it's nothing else compares to from where you know you're tied down to like a desk job or, or having to work on somebody else's time right um you know you dictate the amount of work that you put in or the hours that you work and if you need to delegate it then delegate you know you delegate right. it or whatever but you know being able to have that flexibility i think that's one of the things that really draws a lot of people to starting to do their own thing and and on that tune like you know talk about you know so some of the you know challenges or hardships that you've had to endure because i could i can only imagine that it's you know i've i've kind of been doing my own thing for a couple of years now and like i i know the ups and downs that it comes with with running your own business and and all the challenges that comes with it, I mean, COVID included, that I, I feel like, what, what are some of the things, some of the challenges that you've had to endure and, and overcome? Yeah, so, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, and sometimes I don't even like the word entrepreneur, because I feel like I'm not, I'm just a, reg- I'm just a kid from Grove City selling laptops, right? Um, but I guess, I mean, that's the definition of it. Um, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to work for someone else, get a paycheck every week, don't worry about it on the weekends. Um, it's much easier to work for someone else. It is. If you, if you can't like handle it or you can't, you know, if you're fine with your job and you love what you do, there's no reason to stop what you do. Um, but there's a lot of headache. There's a lot, especially when you grow and every single customer, if a customer complains, if a customer is upset, if a customer gets their product and they're not happy, um, it all comes back to me. Hey, Cause we, you know, I'm not, Amazon, you know, Jeff Bezos doesn't know anything about me when I get mad about my order, right? Right. Um, but our customer, our company's not as big enough yet where I don't have to hear about this stuff. So I have to hear about everything. And I used to be very, very scared um, to work on laptops when I didn't know what I was doing because I'm like, yeah, I can do it, right? Um, but then, you know, I'd figure out. But I was always so nervous about if I mess this up, like I don't have enough money to replace this fix yeah. it yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you, like if this battery does like this doesn't work i spent the money on the battery they haven't paid me yet i'm out 100 bucks or whatever and if i break their stuff i'm scared but now it's like i'm good but um yeah it's a lot of stress it's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of ups you know people always asking questions people um you know driving here from two three five eight somebody drew from new york like when I first opened the shop, just like off TikTok, and you know, uh, we got a great customer base, fan base. I hate to say that, but we got some good, really, really good people out there that follow us and like us. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of ups, a lot of downs too. Uh, the downs about this stuff is, you know, unhappy customers, a product showing up to somebody's door, and it it turned on for me, and now it's not turning on for you. And then, you know, since we do ship like all over the world, you know, something gets to a customer that lives in California and it's like, okay, now they got to ship it back. Right. So they got to ship it back. We got to fix it again. It's like, I just had it working. Um, but you know, and just, I don't know this moving to this shop that we're in now was a big challenge for me. Um, not challenge. It was like, I was just like nervous to do. I was nervous to open the shop in Grandview too. Cause when I opened it, in like June, like May of last year, I put, literally, I put every single penny I had into opening that shop, which wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a ton of money, um, but, you know, five grand I put into that shop because, you know, I was always buying stuff and I always had like money and product, but I was just like, all my money is going into the shop and now nobody's coming in and it's scary. And, you know, there are some days that we, you know, go through stuff and not a package comes in. You're like, what? But then the next day, this, this past week, we had like 50 packages come in. From customers, so it's like okay, we got this, and it's you know, it's a constant product. It's like I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes, like thinking about. It's gotten better now because we're doing a lot better, but sometimes just like nervous, like because it's not just me. I gotta worry. I gotta worry about Raymond. Um, I gotta pay Raymond every week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he has a kid. He has a you know, I he's a full grown man. He has to get a paycheck every week. So I remember opening my business the first couple first. Um, there were some weeks that I didn't pay myself, and I was like, Raymond's more important than me. And now I am. I'm, get off on this, I guess. I am um, more than appreciative of Raymond. He is absolutely amazing. I would love for him to one day, like, be everything that I am as far as, like, running the company. Like, do this kind of, He pretty much runs the shop now. Um, but I would love for him to one day be like, hey, dude, you're in charge of Strictly Apple. 
I'm just whatever you think. He's he's ama- absolutely amazing. I mean, like I tell you, I mean, my experience with him, you know, working with him when Same I got the phone was, yeah, I mean, it like I was it's like, okay, I, I, you know, he, he was super, you know, you know, he was he was great. The whole experience with with him was was awesome because he, you know, let me know, hey, you know, this is what I think it is. I'll let you know, you know, what it looks like. He even yeah. followed up and like, hey, you know, just letting you know, this is what we're gonna do. I put the part on order, yada right. yada. Um, you know, come swing by, come check it out. He's like, okay, boom, here's done. You know, mm-hmm. this is how much it costs. It's yeah. you know, if you have any problems, let me know. Right. And it, it, it turned out great. I mean, it's it's funny because he even shot me a text. A couple of days afterwards, just asking, hey, you know, is everything, you know, working fine or whatever? I'm, yeah. gu- I'm guessing it is, but like, even like shot me a text just asking, hey, you know, just checking right. in, and make, making sure everything's good. So, I mean, I, I think it's awesome. And kind of, you know, what kind of going back to like the challenges, like it's, I don't know, I, you, you kind of hit, you hit it too, where you said that, you know, it, not every, it, this is, isn't really cut out for everybody. Like, not everybody's really made to kind of be doing their own thing. Um, and if you're happy with where you are, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But because I, I feel like too, a lot of time, like the whole thing with like entrepreneurship, I think everybody's, you know, oh, you got to be your own boss. You got to be your own boss. And that's not necessarily the case because I don't think everybody's, you know, like I said, not everybody's cut out to, to right. be their own boss. And you, you know, you have to deal with like literally all the, you know, like you said, you deal with all the, all the ups and all the downs, especially when you're starting out, you have to deal with it and you have to, you know, yeah. You got to move forward. Like, lot, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's a lot to take on. And like, it's, you know, would you recommend that to, to somebody who wants to be like, what would you say to somebody who's like, you know, they like tinkering with, you know, devices and, you know, they're looking at starting their own thing. Like, I mean, would you advise like, Hey, start your own thing or. No. Yeah, definitely start your own thing. If you can do it, obviously you got to make sure that, you know, if you have a family and stuff like that, you got to make sure that they're taken care of and provided for uh, before. Don't just, I mean, if you're, I mean, I was 20, 21, I mean, 22 I am still 22 but I was 22 when I opened my shop so like I mean what is if anything I can move back in with my parents you can't do that if you got three kids yeah I mean, <laughs> you know and, what I mean yeah for sure I feel like some people you know they definitely you know your circumstances also you know play a factor but I, I think one of the biggest things is that a lot of people who you know some people are not happy with their current situation and and don't do enough to try to change their situation right no, yeah, you can definitely. To be honest, I, Raymond, um, Raymond, he always says like he likes hanging around me and my brothers and dad and stuff because you know we influence him. Raymond had a rough, I mean, I won't go into it, but he had a rough upbringing. I mean, to be where he is now, it's it's honestly a miracle. And I look at, he looks at me. I know he looks at me every day. Like man, one day like I want to be able to like do something, you know, stuff like that. But I look at him and I'm like. Like, if, dude, if you can do it, I know I can do it. Um, and it's, it's, it's cool to be able to look at him and do that. But, I mean, if you, if, I would definitely say go out and start a business. There's no reason not start a business. I mean, and, and even if it's a side gig. I mean, if you can make an extra $1,000 a month on a side gig, why not? Yeah. You know, and that's what, I would, I mean, that's what I was doing when I started. So. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that for me is that, that I see, you know, even myself included, like, I, you know, for the longest, I, I was always, like, I didn't have the best upbringing Mm -hmm. and I didn't have a lot of, I really didn't have a lot of the resources and I didn't, you know, a lot of times I literally had to figure, figure out how to, you know, how am I going to get enough money to buy food or how am I going to, you know, pay this bill or or do this or that, that, you know, like, I don't know, I I hear some people like they'll, aren't, are unhappy with their situations, but don't do enough to try to get out of it. And like, I, I think, especially nowadays with social media, like everybody has, I, I guess the barrier to entry mm-hmm. is a is a lot lower that people are, are really it's free able too. to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, you don't necessarily have to like buy all these courses or or go to school or do a lot. I mean, a lot of it is really online. I mean, hell, I've I can think I've learned a lot of shit from TikTok or yeah. YouTube or um, even like like me when I started doing video, um, I a lot of it was really you know we, I joke with my friends that we talk about like YouTube University because literally a lot of the stuff is just trial and error figuring it out you know press tinkering with buttons and just figuring out how to how does it all work and how to you know how to how to make it happen that it uh, you know eventually just kind of just clicks and you just figure it out but I, I, I guess to kind of to kind of get get back on track is I feel that a lot of people think that everybody has to be an entrepreneur and while you don't have to everybody you know 
it'd be cool if you have a side gig or, or do something else to, you know, if, if, if that's what you want to do yeah. to, to, to make money or, or to have extra income to have, you know, be able to take a vacation or do whatever. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to like cash in all your chips and like, you know, start, yeah. start flipping, you know, computers or whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it re- at the end of the day, it really boils down to what, you know, what your aspirations are and, and where you want to dedicate your attention because, you know, to kind of go back to that, I feel like a lot of people, they'll start their own thing or start their own business or, 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 you know, put all their money into like starting this thing and it's, it gets hard and then they just quit. Yeah, because it's too hard, and like I, 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 I guess to kind of the point that I wanted to get across is that it's if if this is something that you're gonna pursue and you're gonna do that, understand that it's not gonna be easy and it's gonna come with its own challenges, especially as you start to grow and get more clientele, make more money. It's you know you at, at each different level has its own different set of challenges, but at the end of the, at the, at the, end of the day. It, it really boils down to how much do you want it and like the effort that you put in because right. a lot of the times I feel like it's, it's the amount of effort that you put in that's what's reciprocated in in the output that you get from your you know the the income that you're bringing in or the customer service or the quality of the product that you're offering it all really boils down to how much effort you put in and how you know how serious you're taking it mm-hmm. no yeah and I think that at the end of the day you got to do what makes you happy so if you if what makes you happy is working five days a week, your nine to five job, going home to your family, or going home and watching Netflix and eating popcorn, I don't know. You gotta do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, whatever makes you happy, don't do it for someone else. Don't start a business for someone else. Don't um, work for someone else. Do what makes you happy. Um, and you know, be smart about it, obviously. It make me happy to sit on the couch watch The Office all day, right? Yeah, um, I mean, but, who wouldn't like that, right? right? Hey, listen, they took it off Netflix, but I'm, you know, that's a different story, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, do what makes you happy. And at the end of the day, um, I mean, you'll get to where you want to be. And wherever you want to be, you got to push for them. It's not easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And have you had any other, like, mentors or any other people that you kind of, like, looked up to, you know, outside of, like, your family and your parents uh, as, you know, as you're, you know, growing your business and kind of experiencing all of this real time? No, I got a lot of people um, that I look up to, not specifically in the same field, um, I got a buddy named Chris that started a business, and well, first of all, I look up to my dad more than anybody. I look up to both my brothers because um, they both started businesses and the same thing. I never got a penny from anybody, never did nothing, started from the ground up. Um, none of us have a degree in college, um, nothing like that. So it's like you can start from literally anywhere. Um, but I look up to my buddy Chris. He started a business that's abs- it's, I mean, it's, it's huge. It's, it helps um, people with special needs and stuff like that gives him a place to work. Um, and it's like the second largest business like he has in the world, which is really cool. And it's here in Columbus, um, up off Morse Road. But he, um, I look up to him, I look up to um, a guy named Alex Rogers, Alexander, I don't know if you know him, Redhead, anyways. Um, I look up to him a lot too, um, that's what he does. He's a really good friend of mine. Um, we talk like all the time. Um, but I think my, the biggest person I look up to is probably my dad. Because it's like, I, I would literally do anything. My family means more than, I would take this whole place down if I met, like, my family. Like, yeah. it's not worth it to me. But, my, yeah, my family, I look up to them. I have, it, they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's awesome. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that uh, you have kind of like that, um, that tight relationship with, with the family because it's, you know, I've, for me, like, everything that I do is to provide for my family. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, if, if it means that I need to do things differently because it's jeopardizing my family life or it's getting in the way of something that's going on at home, then, like, I'll do whatever I need to do to kind of get around with that. Like, I mean, that's one of the challenges that I had as, as I was starting to grow and get busier, get more work while still having a regular day job. Um, you know, there's only so much time in a day. So I was spending a lot of time, you know, not only working my regular job, but then I'd come home, I'd have to edit, mm-hmm. I had to go to shoots, and, and a lot of my time was, was very limited. So, like, I wasn't spending as much time with the kids or with the family. And that kind of, that came with its own challenges. And I've had to really, you know, kind of prioritize, okay, well, does that mean that I need to charge more money or and take less work, or does that mean I need to just take less work in general so I can, you know, factor in more time at home or, or do more things? So, like, honestly, like, every, everything that I do 
Now it's all centered around, okay, how is this gonna affect my family life and do we have something going on or, or how is that gonna af affect that? And it's made my life so much easier because I've been able to kind of just manage around that. And like a lot of times people, um, I, I guess something that, that, that I wanna, wanna talk about is what do you think about like with the growth, right? You know, you you experienced this. You had this surge of of you know rapid growth with people starting sending you things in. Before you were just flipping laptops. Now you're doing repairs, and now you're getting it from not only like locally. You're literally you said you've literally getting it from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So that's one amazing. And do you feel that that you had to grow too fast? That you were you were you did you feel like with the growth were you able to kind of um, uh, I guess keep up with that growth. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job at keeping up with the growth considering I think our biggest thing that we needed to do to keep up with the growth was move to this Grove City location. The other location was a gut man. <laughs> yeah. um, it was, I don't even know how we fit the stuff that we did. Um, but I think we've done, I mean, the best that I know how um, to keep up with the growth and to like, provide a place that, you know, all the customer stuff is going to, you know, be taken care of and at the same exact time they're going to... Um, you know, people can come in the area locally. They can stop in and they can have a place that, like, okay, I trust this place. You know, it doesn't just look like a little hole in the wall. Other place was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I think as much as as much as I know how, I'd say we're doing good with keeping up with the growth um, with me and Raymond because it's a two man show right now. Um, I'd like to get somebody here in the future, maybe by the end of the year or something like that, have somebody else that's taking care of it. Um, but I mean, as much as possible, I think we're, as much as I know how, we're taking care of the growth. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, I feel like with, with each different stage of growth, like there's, you know, has this different set of challenges. And, you know, I, I guess one of the things that I kind of wanted to just talk about is that it's, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people give up too soon. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, that's why it's, it's cool being able to hear about, like I, I mean, you said, you literally, you moved into the Grandview spot. You were like, oh, nobody's Scared coming in. Like, oh, what's what's gonna happen? And then next thing you know, you know, yeah, TikTok yeah. happened, and now you're, you know, you're outgrowing that place. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, uh, I think there's a lot to be said about, you know, at the end of the day, you know, really, really honing in on what's important to you and what your goals are, and seeing them through, and not giving up, you know, because I feel like a lot of times people just, you know, though it gets it gets hard for a little bit or they you know go through certain challenges and they're just like okay well screw this yeah. I don't want to deal with it and there's and there's a time you got to learn like when to give up and then when not to give up because yeah. a lot of people like my first month in business like at the, at the Grandview shop I was like dude is this gonna work and then a month later everything changed I was like yeah that was crazy because okay, sometimes it's like okay this is not gonna work we need to move to something else but don't necessarily give up like the ambition of the drive just give up maybe what you're doing mm -hmm. to get where you want to go yeah and how do you feel you know even with the kind of going back a little bit to like the how you've been able to uh, leverage social media to help grow strictly apple you know was there what are your views on on using social media to you know as an as an extension of or, or the be, making that be like the face of your company and in your brand like what do you you know do you feel i how, how do you feel about that? Because I feel like a lot of people too, they, you know, some people feel like, oh, well, I don't, I don't need to have a social media presence to grow my business or yeah, to yeah. run my business. In 2021, you need to have social media. To, if you're, yeah, no, it's social media is huge. We last year, this time, 2000 likes on Facebook and 2000 followers on Instagram. Now 8,000 likes on Facebook. 131,000 followers on Instagram and 630,000 followers on TikTok. Social media will blow your business up. It doesn't matter. And you know, a lot a lot of people say they're not going to use TikTok, they're not going to use social media because I try to tell my brother this too. Um, you know, like landscaping, like you can't get a job in California. You know, if you're in Ohio, like you got to go mow somebody's grass or whatever. But I've had so many local people come in here from TikTok. Like it's not just a it's not just a it reaches like globally. It reaches like people in your state see it too. I've yeah. had so many people come in here from TikTok um, and from social media um, that just come in here and purchase something. They like what they see. They get their product. Yesterday, I had a dude drive two and a half hours away 
here to get something fixed on his laptop, and he drove it back. Wow. Back to the place. And I'm sure he had a I'm sure he had a shop within 30 minutes of him, but he brought it here because he like he saw social media. His sister sent him a video, and he saw it and drove here to fix his computer because it wasn't working. We fixed it within like an hour and a half. And social media is absolutely huge. If you are not using social media to your full advantage, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, you got to. It's so it's gigantic. It's gigantic. Yeah, and you know, and then I, another thing too that's amazing is how, you know, you talked about, you know, it's, you know, you're just using your phone. You don't not really doing anything super high, per, you know, high production yeah. value. Like it's you're using your phone. You edit a little bit, yeah. and you know, you put the content out there. How much uh, d- is there a lot of effort that goes into, you know, the type of videos that you put out, or do you a lot of times you're just really documenting what's going on, like real time? Um, a lot of it's just documenting what's going on. Um, the videos. I mean, you just press the button let go of the button and then press the button again. Sometimes <laughs> it's like, um, there are times though where I'm making a 60 second video and I keep like, I keep messing up. Like I say something stupid. And then, um, the thing is, the thing about having social media followers is that they're always going to correct you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right? They're, they're going to point out something. They're going to point out, <laughs> listen, if you got two different socks on, they're going to point it out, which is fine. They can comments or comments is what that's okay. But sometimes I'll be watching a video and be like, no, I said that incorrectly. Or I, um, I, I don't know, like, you know, a heart, I call it a, I try to make it, I try to dumb it down a little bit for people just because not everybody knows what a certain part is. So if yeah. I say hard drive cable, most people will be like, okay, that's the cable that goes to your hard drive. Well, people will comment and you, you mean actually SATA data cable or something like that? I'm yeah. like, yeah, man, SATA data cable. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, but it's a hard drive cable. Like, I try to, I, I like making videos that everybody can understand because I know I've watched videos before and this guy's speaking a language that I do not know. And he's, you know, it's like Chinese and you're like, what is he talking about? Oh, okay. So this cable is the one that connects the hard drive to the motherboard, which c- gives you all your data. Like right. that makes sense. Right. But you know, that's, that's, that's the like worst part people commenting and saying stuff. Um, but it, it is what it is. Everybody, I mean, there's always got to be that person. It's but, not social media without it. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever struggle with like trying to figure out like what, you know, what you're going to post or what to share? Because, you know, I, me as a creative, one of the things that, you know, and I guess a lot of other people too, is they'll, they'll get too caught up with wanting to show, you know, they want their feed to be this great thing or this video that they're going to share. They want it to be like the best video, a better video than the last. So I feel like a lot of people get stuck in like that, like, analysis paralysis where they're just overthinking the content that they're going to put out there and at the end of the day they end up not putting anything out because they're just afraid of either what people how it's going to be received or what people are going to say or they don't feel that it's good enough to, to share and then it just sits in a hard drive and I, nobody sees it I think people the biggest person you have to overcome is yourself and the reason people don't post videos is because they're like they are literally scared of their self um, or like what people are going to say, because when I started posting videos, people were making fun of the way I said it, but now I don't say nothing. <laughs> They're like, Hey, yeah, that's my buddy Lance and check TikTok or whatever. Um, but no, it, the reason I think people over, they overthink it, especially on TikTok. TikTok, TikTok is such, it's made to be such an easy platform to either go viral. M- my most viral videos are the ones where I took two minutes to make it the video. It's like wild, if you, right? if you, yeah. The, the ones that I'm sitting there like thinking like, Okay, I should say this. How should I say this? They don't go nowhere. You don't get nothing. It's the it's the genuine, unique, raw footage of what you're doing. People love it because they're used to going everywhere else, and it's all fake. It's all made up, right? Um, but if you just have a raw video of doing what you're doing, and people absolutely they love. It. I love to see it. You know what would I like to see? These are videos that I would like to see and watch. So. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And, and uh, you know, it's it's just being being authentic to who you yeah. are, and you know, just keeping it real and just sharing what you would want to share. Because mm-hmm. it's you know, like I struggle with that a lot. Where a lot of times I like I'll you know work on a super cool super cool production, or like maybe I wasn't super I wasn't very happy with how that production turned out, and you know, I feel like I could have done better. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna share or post anything you know with it, or whatever. So I'm trying to do do a better job of of not caring as much what. Um, how how I feel about it and then just putting the work out there because it's it's I've had that too where like something that I think wasn't that great it turns out to be it turns out to be the greatest res- yeah it is received very well and people are like oh my god I love this how did you do this yeah. and then I'm like oh wow I'm like I almost didn't post this because I thought it was trash or because I didn't I forgot to do this or that or whatever so I I think that's awesome 
And as we start to wrap up, you know, you're you know, you're here in this, you know, the new off the new storefront in Girl City, you you know, do you have any other have you thought about like what's what's next or you know, are you guys expanding to like different locations or, you know, doing different kind of you know, not just Apple or Yeah. Um <laughs> it's a loaded question. Um I've thought about making other locations. I just don't know how I'm going to, I have no idea how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm running this one half the time, but um, I, I would like to have other locations, um, but I think a lot of our stuff comes, a lot of our stuff does come like from around like the nation. So it's like, do I need another location? So I got to think about that. Um, I have thought about opening other businesses though, to be honest, uh, and doing, I don't know. I mean, do you have any other interests outside of like, you know? I would like to flip houses. like. Um, but I like the name. I would like all my businesses to be strictly something. So like, I don't know, strictly flipping, strictly like strictly flip, strictly housing, um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like strictly apartments. I don't know. I think it would be cool to have the whole like strictly. That's a well, like that name. I yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I would like to do something like that. I personally would rather just. Um, I will. I want to open up a, a apartment complex one day. That's like my goal. Like, that's pretty. It'd be pretty cool for me. Strictly. I don't know. Or maybe a huge restaurant or something. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff, but I just got to make sure this one's good to go. I would like to hire somebody else here within the next six months to a year that could replace me where I don't necessarily have to be here and then I can go off and um, get into other ventures. Get into other ventures, right? Because, and I've also thought about opening up to um, doing other computers like PCs and, but I don't know. I feel like the reason that we've got the publicity and stuff that we have now is because we're strictly Apple. Like there's no, there's tons of computer shops that put hard drives into an HP, but there's very, very few people that do exactly what we do. Yeah. And I was gonna ask, have you had any, have you had any issues like with the name Apple? With what? Well, not not only with the name, but just even just repairing like on Apple devices. Because from my understanding, they've always kind of had on lock on like authorized repairs and like right. things of that nature. Like, it, have you had any issues with that? No. The thing is, is we're not. I haven't had any issues with that, um, and if, I don't know if we would in the future. I, I honestly not for sure. Um, we're not authorized repair. The reason I'm not authorized repair, I can go get authorized repair. I have a little sticker on my window and a piece of paper to show the customers. But if we get become an authorized repair, we cannot repair certain devices. So like. If it's over four to five years old, we can't touch it. Okay, Legally. so it kind of goes back. So then now you end up becoming like the Best, best buy, buy or whoever. Yeah, I don't want gotcha. to be Best Buy. I want what I'm doing now. I want to be somebody come here and be like, hey, this thing is old, but we can replace it. I don't even know if it's worth fixing, but if you have sentimental value or there's stuff in the hard drive, somebody sent in their um, iPod Classic, the ones with the spinning, the 30 pin charger oh, and the wow. spinning wheel. And like the, the one that was like $400 and it was the size of a, a sponge or something, right? <laughs> um, they spent that in and I was like, man, it's, it's, he needed a new battery. And I'm like, it's not, honestly, it's not worth fixing. But they're like, well, no, I would like to have it done because it was my first one. I just want to get it done. I said, hey, you can do it. You take the Best Buy, they'll just laugh. But we know we can't do nothing. I don't want to become authorized repair. What am I, because an authorized repair, I'm only repairing certain stuff. And I'm not, I want to, I would like to help everybody out. But it's, it's, there's no reason I can't replace a um, hard drive or something in something that's like 2014 or 2015. Like, those things are still have value, so. Yeah, that, that's uh, awesome. I'd love to hear that. And is there, you know, uh, I guess now with like, you know, do you have any closing thoughts? Is there anything that me you maybe you would like to share or talk about that maybe we didn't touch on? Um, no, I mean, I'm not really for sure. No, I'm not really for sure. This is kind of cool, though, to be honest. I never does it like yeah, this. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate you coming on. It, it's, it's, you know, it's been an honor and, like, looking forward to see you, you know, continue to grow. Hopefully you can, you know, hire, hire that extra person and allow you to kind of free up a little bit more of your time to, you know, pursue different ventures. And, and I, I guess with that being said, you know, again, thank you for coming on. And where can we find you on social media and, you know, yeah. your, your plugs or anything else that you want, you know, wherever you, wherever you want people to find you. Every single social media, it's strictly Apple. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Google, leave us a review. <laughs> um, reviews are a big deal. Um, but yeah, every single plug is, social, uh, is uh, strictly Apple. And we're going to start a YouTube channel soon. We have followers on there now. I don't have a YouTube channel. I would like to know what to put on the YouTube channel because it's like, am I going to do unboxings? Am I going to do repairs? Am I going to do reviews? Like, because there's, I can do it all. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I mean, it could be, you could do, teach everything. people how to fix the stuff too. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I got to look into that. But yeah, Strictly Apple on every social media platform um, will be the first people to pop up. So. Sweet. So with that being said, uh, thank you for coming on the creative block. And you know, until next time. No problem, man. Thank you.